Hello and welcome to All Things West Ham. Uh, today, me and Dennis uh, will talk about the Andlek win last week, uh, the point away at Southampton on Sunday, and then we'll also preview um, our game at Anfield uh, against Liverpool. Um, so if you're new around here, uh, subscribe to the West Ham way and uh, sign up to the West Ham way uh, Patreon uh, if you haven't already. Best five of you probably spent. Um, and the link's uh, scrolling across the bottom below. So uh, thanks, Dennis, for, for joining, mate. Um, so uh, we'll touch on... I say the end that wins Southampton and uh, and and Liverpool and, and also I should say if, if you're new around here as well, um yeah subscribe to West Hamway channel, um and uh, let us know if, uh, your comments down below. It'd be great to uh, read those. So let's get on with the um and like uh, tournament point mate. So four wins out for in the uh, Conference League. Um obviously there's a bit, a bit of drama in the stands which we'll touch on, but obviously we beat and like two one four wins out of four. We're through to the. No count stage of the Conference League. We should finish top. Just need one point from two games. But your thoughts on the on the two one win last week? Uh, I said I think uh, like two one makes it seem like it was closer than it was. Andelek never really looked in the game. It was only the last couple of minutes that the panic yeah. station set in, purely because they got one back from a you know a sloppy penalty to give away. Uh, it was a good performance. Ben Rama finally scored a free kick because I uh, know he's yeah. been waiting a while waiting a while for that. Um, and yeah, that's about it, really. I mean, Bowen's our equal top goal scorer in Europe now of all time, which I think speaks volumes about how little we've played in Europe for those wanting to know why West Ham mm. fans um, make such a big deal, even though it is only the Conference League. Um, I said at the draw, it's a tougher group than we had in the Europa League last year, but with the exception of a w- the way trip to Denmark, we've never really looked in trouble. And yeah, Win, win the group is good because you miss the Europa League dropouts and you could uh, potentially have uh, an upset in the in that round or two of the tougher teams drawing each other, which would be class. So helps us out no end. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it was a similar performance to the away game, man. Like for me, um, you know, we completely outplayed them. They didn't really have a a great deal up front, obviously, under that and not the side you know they were a few years ago, so hence why they were in the, playing in the Conference League this this season. But um, yeah, didn't really lay, lay a glove on us. But unlike the away game, the home game last week, we we raced into a two 0 lead. And uh, apart from as you say that a few maybe hairy moments in in, in June time after they uh, got a penalty out of nowhere, um, it was just kept him at arm's length, and it was it was quite comfortable. So it was great for Ben Rump to uh, get the uh, obviously starting in a great free kick, and then. Um, and we scored at the right times, really. So, um, you know, after what, a quarter of an hour and then half hour into the game, Jared Bone, I should say, um, got a goal in. But what what finish it was, eh? Yeah, uh, brilliant. Uh, lightning fast. Uh, Emerson had the freedom of Stratford, really, to get that ball in. Uh, <laughs> whereas, uh, sadly, that doesn't quite translate for him uh, in the Premier League. We'll touch on that later. But, uh, but yeah, it was a great turn. Well, not to, you know what I mean, the great opening up the body to finish it top corner we didn't think we didn't realize it was i didn't realize it was good as it was until i saw it on youtube later in the evening uh first we thought he had just toe whacked it and it sort of spooned Mm. over the goalkeeper didn't i was opposite end didn't really have the best look of it uh but yeah bowen's uh bowen's turned it around a little bit from a what what can only be described as a terrible start to the season so it's quite good yeah no hey um yeah, obviously he's. Uh, I think he's taking his conference league form into the Premier League now, which is which is uh, which is great. But uh, well, we've said about a lot of a lot of our players now. That's where we've had a really good October. But uh, yeah, and then and then in the end, uh, yeah, and like got a penalty near the end, which I, I, to be honest with you, I, I, we'll touch on it. Miles will touch on it now. The uh, obviously the uh, trouble in the in the crowd with you know the Andalek fans, they start you know ripping seats up, throwing out the. West Ham fans nearby, and then well, I say flares in the in the away end. It was more like a bonfire, wasn't it? A couple of them. So it was more. Yeah. Well, I think most of the fans were watching what was going on rather than the second half, where it was it, quite a drab affair. It was like watching a straight to DVD sort of medieval battle where they start throwing fire at each other towards the end uh, while trying mm. to like siege a castle. That's what it felt like. It was crazy. Um, it didn't look. It looked a bit like okay, they've set flares off their own end, and then suddenly you see one going into the home fans and sadly the thought process you had was oh well no doubt we you know no doubt we're going to be blamed for this or something's going to come out that we started this because that's just sort of how you feel when you see these things yeah or or, or a ban or something from UEFA yeah I mean but the fact the Andalek manager immediately came out and apologized I think should really explain where the blame lied I mean 
yeah. I believe the pitch invader I've read recently, I, you know, I believe from what I've read, it was an Adelec fan, not a West Ham fan. At first, people thought it was a West Ham fan, similar to that uh, uh, moron that ran on the Leon game when we were on the attack. At least this time, we weren't on the attack. Um, well, it was a nice sidestep by Ariola, I have to say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm um, hopefully because of the manager's comments, there won't be any charges. I mean, the only thing at worst, they retaliated by throwing a couple of the chairs back. Um, but there's some videos of emerged of people being quite rightfully scared when the flares are being thrown at them as well. So. Oh, yeah, 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 you got, got off, yeah, obviously, um, you expect a bit of banter away between your home and away fans, especially if you're obviously sat nearby. But that was just, uh, it was just, well, it was, it was shameful, wasn't it? Yeah, it's kind of again explains why a lot of people that uh get tickets that are either not their season ticket because it's cheaper or that they get to you know, will probably always prefer to go Billy Bonds or towards our stand, our, our end of the stand. Um, did have half a mind to pop, potentially get a ticket in that end just to see what it was like, but then I realized it was ad elect and was like, probably best not to. Hmm. Uh, when the Danes come over, it might be an idea, but not with ad elect, no. No, but as, as you say, but back back to the obviously the, the game. That's four wins from from four, and uh, just need one point from the remaining two games, which are uh, was the Silkeborg at home and FCSB. You know, Stalbo crest the way, and uh, were be the second time in successive season we finished top of our uh, mm-hmm. European group, which is a great achievement. Yeah, it would, and uh, you know, depending on who who drops down out of the Europa League, because there could be some really you know big teams coming down. As I said last year. The Conference League final could have been, felt like an old school Champions League final, uh, almost, or not maybe not Champions League, but it had like that old school sort of vibe to it. You UEFA Cup, yeah, like, so yeah, the, UEFA, the, the Cup, UEFA yeah. Cup, yeah, yeah. Whereas uh, the Euro, Euro, Europa League final is Rangers versus Frankfurt, which is just, you know you would have thought that would be the Conference League final on paper, based on what the you know the ranking of the competition is. So. Yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on it. I mean, I think it's an open competition. Do I think, am I going to sit here and say we're going to win it? Being realistic, I'd say no, but we've certainly got a chance and depends on the draw. I mean, you know, people wrote us off against Seville and Lyon last year and we beat both of them. Yeah, yeah, obviously, uh, yeah. But, well, obviously, no matter how far you get in any competition, whether it's even the Carabao Cup or, or whatever, the further you go, obviously, the better teams are. So, um it all depends on the on the draw and that bit of luck, as you say. So uh the only thing, mate, obviously apart from the trouble in the in the stands, which is a shame, was the couple of injuries we had, um, especially at the back. Um mm. you know, Bonner obviously um he started one off after like twenty odd minutes and then Craig Dawson in his place, he come on and he gets substituted near, near uh, about fifteen minutes or so from the end. Yeah, and that's gonna be a big loss. I mean, again, we'll touch on it no doubt very soon. But um yeah, like Luke like Ogbonna in his comeback from injury, like the fact that he was on the bench mean I hope that he was he is potentially fit enough to play. But uh losing Dawson just as he come back, the impact he had was great. Zuma appears to be injured, although I don't think that happened in the game. I could be wrong. Um but yes, uh, it means that we're now back at a similar situation we were at the beginning of the season. I mean, mm. hell, if we hadn't have bought Kerra, what would we be doing right now? We wouldn't have a single fit centre back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, nightmare. Sort of stuff, <laughs> you know, yeah, so that was so. The, yeah, that was the only that was the only thing from um, you know the end of the game on on the pitch was which is a shame. I thought you know thin down started again. I thought you looked excellent. Um, so uh, and obviously good to see uh you know, uh, obviously, Bone get a goal, and uh, like I said, Emerson get more minutes under there, and Paqueta get another start as well. So, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully, that that helps um, going forward. So, let's move on to uh, the stalemate um, on Sunday against uh, Southampton. Um, obviously, uh, going one 0 down fairly early was a great start by us, but uh, I think uh, I think we were responding really well, especially second half. We were absolutely, for me, we were absolutely dominant against Southampton, mm-hmm. and. Uh, if it finished three one to us, four one to us, I think it wouldn't have uh, flattered us whatsoever. And uh, uh, Ralph Hudson has it will probably be out of a job by now. I mean, to quote Andy Townsend, it's one of them for me, Bill. Uh, yeah. Again, it's very yeah. similar to Nottingham Forest levels of, uh, but mm. okay, not okay, okay. It weren't Nottingham Forest levels of bad luck, but it was like it, another day. Skamaka scores one of those chances. On another day, Ben Rahm buries that chance at one one. 
and on another day that goal is potentially disallowed. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and complain about it. Uh, the, the only mild complaint is about the referee's position. Uh, the throw, the you know, as per letter of the law, the throw in wasn't the issue. That and I can't believe personally that people on Twitter are still making a deal of it. It's it, you know, that throw in was was legitimate because his foot was still on the line. Um, but it was more the uh, referee whether you you had the opinion that he blocked off Bowen or not for making that tackle. Uh, on another day, could quite easily have been disallowed. So it's one of them, sadly, and you're going to get. Two of those a season. Hopefully, we've got two of them out of the way now. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't um, obviously that that I think Sam Hampton, they, that first 15, 20 minutes were were, were better than us. Yep. We didn't really we didn't really get out the out the uh, out the traps. Um, and yeah, I think uh, whoever's more likely to score was Sam Hampton. And it was uh, and it was their it was their left back in Perot, is it Perot? Um, yeah. He scored an absolute screamer in the FA Cup earlier uh, earlier this year, like sort of February. Time March time, whenever it was, but uh, it was a decent strike by by him in the bottom corner. Fabianski, uh, he had a really good game. Looks Fabianski kept us in it, but mm. in, the, in the first half, uh, he had a, a couple of saves from uh, Che Evans. But the, the second one, where he died, had to dive down to his left, was uh, was superb. Yes, yeah, I said the um, I was about to say Che Adams' chance could have been two 0 easily, and we were very much indebted to Fabianski. I mean, again, at you know, at the Andlet game, I was having people all around me. I weren't sitting in my normal area saying, "Oh, Ariola's got to start ahead of Fabianski." I'm like, "No, I wouldn't say so." Personally, I think Fabianski, you know, is is playing better than a lot of people give him credit, um, and he certainly did keep us in it um, because he got a lot of criticism for the Fulham goal. Uh, but equally, I think Ariola probably would have made the same error because he assumed they weren't going to shoot. He's going to try and cut cut it across. Um, but yeah, Southampton dominated. They had even you did have that sickly feeling they were going to catch us on the counter in the second half, uh, similar to what they did uh, at the London Stadium, nearly set up some park when on autopilot uh, <laughs> when they beat us. Um, but yeah, I think I think you know on the balance of play, Southampton could have got, would have gone away feeling like well, even if West Ham dominated us, they could have scored another goal to win. So that's where that's where I'm inkling. So I'm not too disappointed with the draw. Um, but again, like I said, that Skamaka, which would have potentially been goal of the season from the first half, equally with Skamaka's turn and cross, if Paqueta had got the, gone the other, nodded it the other side of the goalkeeper, we could be talking about Paqueta's first goal and a 2 1 win. Uh, but main thing I want to talk about Southampton is uh, Declan Rice passing it backwards into the goal. <laughs> I was um, waiting for that. Yeah, yeah, because he only passes backwards, according to a, a very, very angry Liverpool fan, I know. Um, <laughs> hoping he sees this now, uh, and um, and yeah, so we're uh, Rice showing that he is the average championship footballer centre back fraud that everyone says he is only worth 45 million, uh, and you kissing the badge because he's desperate to leave us and he's twerking for Chelsea so hard. Uh, you know, he clearly was elated with that because he has tried that type of shot a few times this year and it's not really worked out, and it was just. You know, it was perfect. The weight of the ball, everything was perfect. And it was great build-up play from everyone uh, for that goal. So, yeah, just want to talk about Declan Rice's backwards pass. Yeah, uh, no, no, great finish. It's the first, first Premier League goal in about, about a year, I think it is. So, yeah, uh, yeah right in the right in the corner, the uh, the goalkeeper for Southampton, um, uh, Bazunu, I think it is. I think he had a, mm. he had a pretty decent game, actually. And mm. uh, he, he got one, got nowhere near. It was right in the corner. Great strike. And that was a one-two with... Uh, Ben Ramu come on uh, in the second half again. The UME played well. In, um, he come on for Emerson with that half foul to uh, to goal. Yeah, did a one two, and he just knew like he knew exactly what he was trying to do. And and, and I know he hasn't scored in the Prem for a year, but he just knew it was wasn't going to go any, anywhere else. Yeah, and the goalkeeper, even though he didn't really have too many shots to save, he did save what was in front of him, except for that one. But ultimately, what I want to talk about is his command of area. He's only a young keeper. He's about twenty one, twenty two. He's the Irish mm. lad that um. Am I correct? I think he saved Ronaldo's penalty when he played for Ireland. That's what made him a big deal a couple of years ago. I know a big deal was made about him playing for Ireland against Portugal, and I, I know Portugal they're not winning, but I think I could be right or wrong that he saved a Ronaldo penalty. But yeah, his command of area for his age was ridiculous, and I, I thought he was on loan there. But no, Southampton signed him permanently. Yeah, no, he's, he's done well. I mean, obviously, the you know uh, what's it? McCarthy's been there for a few seasons, so he, he's mm. replaced him. So. Uh, 
And uh, and I think Sevens a couple of Sevens have really put their bodies on the on the line. They might not be playing great at the moment, but I mean you can't fault their effort. I mean there was a I think it was Ben Rama's shot it was a, a great block from Walker Peters, who's had an eventful game, especially from when taking throw-ins. But um, yeah, and uh, Kalatakar who, who come on in the in the second half as uh, as well, and Salisu's got is a decent enough uh, defender. So um, yeah, they put their bodies on the on the line, Southampton. Um, for Hassan Hoots, who's who's under pressure, and uh, but I think yeah, we've quite enough chances to to win by a bit. It's just uh, as you say, like Andy Townsend, especially, it's one of them, and we played well enough. And at the start of the season, we weren't really creating a lot of chances. Um, whereas whereas now, um, especially at home, we're, we're scoring a lot. It's just obviously away from home, we need to uh, get on the score sheet a bit more. But um, you know, another day we we would have scored two or three, and uh, we'd come away with uh, another win uh, this month. But you know. If you a goal down away from home and you, and you get the draw, then and you're the better side for pretty much all of the second half. You can't really uh, can't really complain too much. Mm. As yeah, as I said, could have gone either way, but when you know scoring away from home is, or performing away from home has been a problem for us. Yeah, really. I mean, you know, Villa away, we you know I love a shit house and we shit house that one big time. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like like I, I'm not saying we didn't deserve to win. I say also we we you know sorry not saying we stole the win but we didn't really deserve not to win either it was a it was a strange one yeah it was, it was two four two four teams that though yeah it was two four teams uh, but it's like but other than that away from home I mean Chelsea's probably the best performance but yeah um well, I I was in Germany I didn't watch it but apparently best yeah, performance I, no it was, yeah it was I was there yeah it was yeah. really unlucky for about seventy eight minutes looked like we could get something from that. Uh, but on that way from home has been a little bit our downfall. Whereas at home, with the exception of Brighton, we haven't mm. played poorly. You know, the City game, we played as well as we did, in my opinion, against Fulham and Wolves. Uh, just City, a bloody City, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, away form needs to pick up. And I think we need, you know, in away games, I honestly think we need to be starting Ben Rama. And in general, we I love Fournells. He's my favourite puppy, but uh, <laughs> he's not a left winger. I love everything about his game and his energy and happiness. I'm just happy to be there. But he is not a left winger. And away from home, when we're, when we're playing predominantly on the counter, that really does cost us. I say this in the full knowledge, he did score the goal in our only away win. But mm. <laughs> you get my point. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, definitely. Well, so, well, uh, the thing is, mate, we've got uh, a lot of our players are now starting to hit their straps in terms of mm. four moves at the start of the season. Like, well... A handful of players, if 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 you're lucky, who were you know, mm. when they're their form, but also we're starting to hit good form now. Most most of our players now, so um, obviously with a couple of, set of exceptions, but um, just uh, just want to touch on the formation we played against uh, Southampton. Um, obviously we played uh, we played three at the back. Um, we talked about the injuries to our centre backs earlier, and it was it was Johnson, Kerr, and, and Cresswell with uh, you know Sufal and Emerson as the wing backs to start with. I mean, I thought obviously at first as you. Probably naturally, that's probably why Southampton had the better of things because mm. you know you're playing, you know, a right centre, a right hand centre back and a left hand centre back who are full backs. I know Cresswell's done that quite a bit over the years, but still, he's not natural there, is he? And uh, I think Southampton took advantage of that, but I think as the game got on, I thought did those three really uh, excelled, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, it, um, we played what we had to play, really. I mean, yeah. you know, if we had played four, as we learned only at four at the back with one of Johnson or Cresswell uh, is just a liability, especially if you're playing Cresswell because then you have to play Emerson in a flat, in a flat back four, which doesn't really work. And no. that, that's from history has shown us that at other clubs. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, we played with necessity and, you know, it's wasn't the worst performance of the world. Kerra, again, goes from strength to strength. Um you know, some fantastic tackles in the second half to, bro to break up counter attacks, and uh, but against Liverpool, I would be much more comfortable playing two centre backs. I'm just gonna, just gonna say it. I would start. <laughs> I would honestly start Bono against Liverpool because they've got. Um, I think they've got quite a few attackers out there. Nunes and Suarez are only their real two attackers because uh, Jota. Salah. Uh, sorry, Salah. Yeah, not Suarez. Living in the past, you see. <laughs> um, but yeah, the um because um uh Diaz and Jota are out. So yeah. I'm you know, I'm anticipating that to be the excuse if we do get a result, but equally we're missing we're missing defenders, so mm -hmm. it's gonna now it's gonna 
balance itself out, really, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, we might as well touch on the, the uh, game against uh, Liverpool now at Anfield. So, I mean, in general, our, our record at Anfield isn't isn't great, to put it kindly. When our last win there was, uh, you know, last season at Upton Park, you know, the uh, the three 0 win. Um, against Liverpool, I think one of Brendan Rodgers' last games uh, as Liverpool manager. And before that, was it 63, I'm going to guess, was our last win? Uh, yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was, it was 1963. Yeah, so uh, I, I, think, I, I, think the, um, I think the last few seasons, we've played well at Anfield and on another day, probably got should have got at least a, a win or two. Yeah, we haven't um, played badly yeah. at Anfield. I mean, um, last year, we had two half chances that both 4-0s and Lanzini skied. Another day, they get that on target, and we win that game 2-1. Uh, lockdown year, we took the lead early on and then just sat back. <laughs> because back then, that, this is when we were still finding our identity, and we had Haller up top, which is, you know, as much as I, I, I you know, I think he was better than he was, we won't go into it. Uh, Liverpool is the type of team he would hate playing against. Um and um, before then, when we had uh, released all the black balloons, we came dangerously close to beating Liverpool. Just uh, we, we had saw the return of Flappy Hansky for one half only. Um, yeah, was that, uh, was that when Four Nels put yeah, someone up? Four Nels to form when Declan Rice passed it backwards into the box uh, from the wing. <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah. Four Nels, I think it was his first touch, like yeah, sort of yeah, turned yeah. and then swept it through. I think is my, my from my memory, he sort of did a pirouette all in one touch and just swept it in um, after the clown had scored a goal from a corner as well. So uh, we it's, came it's, dangerously it's, close. It's, it's a deal game. for uh, for people that don't know. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, obviously Liverpool haven't had a particularly great season so far. I mean, it is still early days, but, you know, they've had a, a stumbling start. Let's put it kindly. But they got a great win um, against Man City um, mm. at Anfield on, on Sunday. Um, you know, um, Mo Salah hasn't been hitting the goals uh, too much recently. He got a, ha- a quick far hat trick against Rangers midweek, and then uh, you know scored a, a good goal, great turn past um, Cancelo near the halfway line, a, a lovely finish mm-hmm. past uh, Edison. Um, and even though they, they had a bit of a patched up back back line, like yeah, they Milner and Shimikas, they Shimikas at right back, didn't they? I think I didn't watch the game personally. No, so yeah, Milner was at right back. Oh, okay, um, I'm getting swapped up, right? Yeah. Um, and then they had, uh, and Gomez come in. He, um, and he, I, I think Gary Neville going man of the match. I can see why Van Dyke was sort of back to his best. Him again, you know, the battle him against Haaland, and he played really well on there. And I think it was Robertson that was. Uh, oh, Robert- Robertson's back. Oh, okay, that's bad for us because he's pretty good. Yeah, uh, um, and I think Trent Alexander Arnold come on in, in the second half. So, um, but yeah, so I mean, obviously. It's, I mean, I, I, we've also mentioned our, our record at Anfield. Is is the game against Liverpool? Is it a free swing, or like do you f- still think we could uh, get a result up there? Well, it depends. I mean, I, I think it's a free here. Uh, you know, against playing against uh, bigger teams, I'm always kind of like like like. I know we've been better recently, but I, I'm used to us finishing twelfth, mate. But on a personal <laughs> level, like, I'll never hear the end of it if we lose to Liverpool thanks to uh, that very angry fan that says Declan Rice only passes backwards. So. Yeah, kind of hope we win. Um, mainly because I want to see his hilarious reaction. Uh, especially I want to see I want Declan Rice to score five goals as well. Uh, but I'm asking. <laughs> I know I'm asking. I know I'm asking a lot there. Uh, but yeah, why I would see it is you know we're playing a patched up defence, and especially if Trent and Robertson are back near enough fitness, or if they play, that means that any frailties they would have at the back are pretty much gone. Um, well, I wouldn't say that with Alexander Arnold's form this season. I'd say he's better at right back than Milner. <laughs> he's not. Well, he's not. Really. <laughs> That's why I, I say before, like you know, for example, it's not, there's no there's no sort of weak link there. Um, but it all depends on what we play and who we play. I mean, I'll be starting Ben Rama personally. I, I'd lo- I'd go back flat back four with um, Ugbonna at centre back. No Emerson. Play Cresswell left back for his set pieces and put Benny up on the left wing. Um, I'd also controversially would probably, if we want to do work rate, right, I would start four nils ahead of Paqueta and bring Paqueta on second half if it's still tight, uh, personally. But that is my personal opinion for the approach we have for this game. 
But ultimately, if we lose, uh, we've lost to what the media like to call the great, you know, the second or, you know, everyone goes on about how it's the greatest ever and stuff like that. So if we lose to them, so bloody what? I, <laughs> you know, uh, we're not going to win every single game. And, you know, City and Liverpool are the top two teams. Maybe add Arsenal to that with a third of their impressive start of like, well, give it a go. But if you lose, you lose, you know. Yeah, no, no, fair enough. And, and how would you play it? Would you, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sit back, spring on the counter, play for set pieces, or do you try and be more, be more on the front foot? Well, with the set pieces again, I, I think I said this before. It's a bit of a myth. Like if we haven't scored, we, the only goal we scored from a set piece has been Craig Dawson's header. Without Craig Dawson, we don't really have that much of a presence at corners. I don't think. Uh, and and, and any direct right. free kick. Oh no! Oh no! I mean, I mean, from a corner is what I'm saying. From from a corner. No, from a corner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we haven't. We've only scored this whole. Oh, we we played for corners. We scored for corners. I, I do think like in the second half of last year, I think we only scored like one goal from a corner as well. It was like this sort of commentators keep saying, "Oh, West Ham, they're strong from corners." I, we've we've scored two goals in 2022 from a corner, from my memory. Um, so without Dawson, it's not really that. <laughs> that that bigger thing. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I mean, your instincts would be to sit back, especially away from home at Anfield. I think if you go and try and attack and we'll end up getting caught. But equally, if you sit back and you can quite easily find yourself 2-0 down and needing to chase the game, similar to sort of Spurs away last year, we found ourselves 2-0 down pretty early on. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't... I mean, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. I think on instincts alone, you'll have to sort of sit back a bit, especially if we do end up playing five at the back. Uh, or three at the back with win backs, which is more likely than risking with Bonner. My personal approach would be to play with Bonner, try and keep it tight and get him on the counter. If Dawson's fit enough, then yeah, play for corners. But yeah. Yeah, no, I think um, I think what we exploited really well in, in the home, the epic home win last season, that, you know, the 3 2 was the uh, exploiting the space, which, uh, you know, Robertson and assuming Alexander mm-hmm. Arnold plays, obviously they like the bomb forward. And uh, I think we exploited the. Uh, I suppose really well, particularly uh, at the London Stadium, you know, typified by uh, Fornells' goal. Um, I know we went through the middle, but we're still in um, in there in mm. so we're still, um, you know, uh, Fornells' go- Fornells Fornells goal that my friend said was offside, despite him clearly running past Matip with the ball. <laughs> well, you're certainly looking forward to it with the Man Liverpool fans that you know, mate. Oh, no, this is all just one fan. <laughs> it's all just one guy. <laughs> we we'll go. All right, go on. Then. What's your what's your gonna, what's your score prediction going to be then for uh, for the game at Liverpool? I'm gonna say two one Liverpool. Boo! <laughs> I know. I'm gonna say two one Liverpool. Yeah, Declan think... Rice passing it backwards for our goal though. <laughs> well, I think. Um... I don't know. I think I think with um, the way we played at Anfield, I think the last few seasons gives me a lot lot of confidence. Um, I, with our obviously our record in history, I don't can't see us winning there. That, but you know, obviously, stranger things happen. But uh, I just feel that um, with defense defense is patched up in our case, uh, and I know Liverpool kept a clean sheet against Man City, but City still created chances. And I think if we can exploit the the um, you know the space, as I say, between. Robertson and Alexander Arnold or Milner, whoever plays on the right hand side, I think um, we can score goals. So I think I'm going to go for a two-two, mate. To be honest, which I'll I'll take in a heartbeat. Okay, as long as both those goals are Rice passing backwards into the goal, <laughs> and preferably a, a Henderson red cards as well, because uh, this same Liverpool fan seems to think Henderson is twice the player Rice is even now. <laughs> and if yeah, we had started Henderson in the Euro final, we'd have beaten Italy. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, all right, okay. Well, um, nice, uh, nice, quick one. So, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Dennis, for uh, for joining us, and uh, we'll we'll see you soon. Indeed. All right, nice one. Great. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Just subscribe to the West End Way if you're new around here, and uh, subscribe to uh, Patreon as well. And uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Great to uh, read those. We'll uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.